In this video, I'm going to show you how to make these fire pit skulls out of refractory cement using two different methods. The first will be the quick and easy version in which I basically just recast a plastic Halloween prop, which is super easy and just requires a few simple tools. After that, I'll show you the process I used to create an original skull from digital sculpt to three-part mold design to 3D print to cement casting. If you look closely, you can see the separation lines from the original factory mold here. Dividing the mold in three parts makes it possible to separate it to remove the casting without destroying the mold. Because this prop is cast with thin walls, the inside of it is essentially a negative of the outer design, so we can cast our cement directly into the prop as long as we are able to divide it along these lines. Once you have established where you want to divide the mold so that each segment will have no undercuts, you can drill a hole for the pour and then cut it apart using either a utility knife or whatever method works best for you. Next, you can carefully tape the parts back together, keeping the seams as tight as possible. Refractory cement is a special type of cement that is resistant to spalling or cracking in high heat environments. For typical applications, like if you were making the walls for a furnace, you would want to use a very dry mixture for your refractory cement and pack it into your form. The lower the moisture content, the stronger the final product will be. In this case, we're going to use a much soupier mixture so that it flows into the fine details of the design and hopefully releases most of the air bubbles. Depending on the size of your casting, it needs to cure for at least 24 hours before you try to remove it from the mold. After that, I recommend letting it dry out for another day or so before you toss it into your fire pit. While that cures, I'll show you how I created my own design, starting with a digital sculpting program called ZBrush. ZBrush allows you to use various tools to work a virtual ball of clay into a 3D design. I'm brand new to ZBrush, but there are a lot of great tutorial videos on YouTube that can help you get started if you want to try it out. I'm just going to give a quick overview of the 3D modeling techniques I use to create the mold for people who already have at least some familiarity with 3D design and printing and maybe want to use this as a jumping off point for their own projects. I'm definitely not qualified to be doing any in-depth tutorials in this area, so this is really just meant for inspiration. Alternatively, you can just download the files I've included in the description to 3D print your own mold. After finishing the sculpt, you'll have a mesh object that potentially has millions of vertices. So before you move to the next step, you need to simplify the 3D object to something manageable. The Decimation Master tool allows you to reduce the number of vertices to around 20,000 before you export it as an STL file. For the next step, I imported that file into Fusion 360. The skull is still too complex to work with in Fusion, so I'm going to move to the mesh editing environment and remesh, reducing the number of vertices to about 25%. Now I can convert the mesh into a solid using the convert to BREP function. To create a negative of the skull, I placed it within a solid block and then used the combine function with the skull as a cutting tool to remove a volume of the same shape. I then drew lines to define the three segments of the mold and used the split body function.
Next, I cut away a hole for pouring in the cement. For this design, I also did a few other modifications to improve the printing and casting processes. I removed a lot of the outer material from the mold that would have been wasted. I added some tabs to help key the individual parts together for alignment, and I designed a spout as a separate component that I'm just going to super glue on after printing. After some sanding and gluing on the spout, I sprayed the parts with several coats of shellac to seal the grooves of the print. I used some Vaseline on the mating surfaces of the mold to make it easier to separate later and to prevent some of the seeping since my tolerances weren't great. I also sprayed the inside with mold release to prevent adhesion with the casting. There are a lot of lubricating products you could use for this, including Pam cooking spray. A vibrating palm sander with the paper removed worked really well to pack the material down into the details of the mold and bring air bubbles to the surface. The refractory cement will tend to shrink somewhat as liquid rises to the top and evaporates during the curing process, so overfilling into the spout provides some additional material that will prevent a dimple or void from forming at the top of the casting. The resulting column of cement on top of the skull can be chipped away later.